Hello and welcome to video lecture series in sociology. Today we are going to discuss from your textbook Social Change and Development in India, Chapter 4. This chapter is titled as Change and Development in Rural Society. This chapter is in general about the rural society in India. It discusses the agrarian structure, that is caste and class in rural India, types of land tenure systems and the impact of land reforms. Today in this lecture, we will discuss about the Green Revolution, its impact on rural society and its social consequences. The land reforms after independence had a limited impact on rural society and on the agrarian structure in most of the regions in India. These reforms basically altered the pattern of land holdings, but did not change the nature, quantity or quality of agricultural production much. It was during the 1960s that a significant change came about in the agricultural production as a result of Green Revolution. The Green Revolution was a government initiated program of agricultural modernization. It was largely funded by the international agencies that was based on providing high yielding variety or hybrid seeds along with pesticides, fertilizers, new agricultural techniques and other inputs to the farmers. When Lal Bahadur Shastri took over as the Prime Minister of India after the death of Jawaharlal Nehru in 1964, the country was facing a challenge of acute food shortage. To tackle this problem of food shortage, Shastri ji pressed for the Green Revolution. He also gave the inspiring slogan of Jai Jawan Jai Kisan through which he hailed the efforts of farmers and soldiers for the nation. With government backing the modernization of agriculture, the pioneering force behind the revolution was Mr. M. S. Swaminathan, who is also called as the father of Green Revolution in India. M. S. Swaminathan was director of the Indian Agricultural Research Institute in Delhi around 1960s. In fact, you should know that Green Revolution was started by Dr. Norman Borla in United States of America way back. During this time, agriculture was in bad condition in India. Per hectare productivity was low, techniques of farming were traditional, and fertilizers were not very effective. The challenge was to improve productivity. Green Revolution involved the development of high yielding varieties of seeds, expansion of irrigation, modernization of agricultural techniques, and distribution of synthetic fertilizers and pesticides to the farmers to improve productivity. The Green Revolution changed India's status from a food deficient country to one of the world's leading agricultural nations. The agricultural productivity increased sharply because of the new techniques of agricultural production. It resulted in a record grain output of 131 million tons in 1978-79. Production per unit of farmland also improved by more than 30% between 1947 and 1979. You would be surprised to know by 1990, both yield of rice and wheat doubled as compared to 1965. In 1960s, only 1 1.9 million hectare land was using high yielding variety seeds. In 1980s, when the Green Revolution was at its peak, 75% of total land under wheat cultivation and 45% of the total land producing rice used high yielding variety of seeds. In the beginning of 1990s, this increased to 63.9 million hectares. The crop area under high yielding varieties of wheat and rice also grew considerably during the Green Revolution. Interestingly, as wheat and rice became abundant and cheap, the calorie intake of people also increased by 30%. There were many other social consequences of Green Revolution. It created jobs for agricultural workers and also for industrial workers with expansion of related facilities such as food packaging, processing, factories making tools and implements to be used in agriculture, power projects, dam, etc. Green Revolution programs were introduced only in areas that had good irrigation facilities because sufficient water was necessary for the new seeds and methods of cultivation. But to overcome food shortage, it was targeted mainly in the wheat and rice growing areas of India. As a result, only certain regions such as Punjab, Haryana, Western UP, coastal Andhra Pradesh and parts of Tamil Nadu received the first wave of Green Revolution package. The Green Revolution although has been considered as a major achievement by government of India. However, certain negative social effects of the revolution are also discussed. First, 
In most areas, it was primarily the medium and large farmers who benefited from the new methods of production. This was because the inputs were expensive and small and marginal farmers could not afford to spend as much as the large farmers to purchase these inputs. You must know that when an agriculturalist produces primarily for themselves and are unable to produce for the market, it is known as subsistence agriculture and they are usually called as peasants. Whereas agriculturalists or farmers are those who are able to produce surplus over and above the needs of their family or subsistence and sell it in the market. They are part of the wider market economy. Green Revolution crops were highly profitable, mainly because they yielded more produce. Well-to-do farmers could invest in the new techniques and were able to increase their production and income. The farmers who could produce a surplus for the market, they were able to reap most of the benefits of the commercialization of agriculture and Green Revolution. But unfortunately, it led to the displacement of small farmers and tenant cultivators. Finding the proposition of Green Revolution lucrative, the landowners began to take their land back from the tenants and cultivated it directly. This made the rich farmers better off and worsened the condition of the landless and marginal landholders. As a result, there was process of differentiation in which rich grew richer and many of the poor became poorer or stagnated. Thus, Green Revolution led to increase in inequalities in rural India. Another important social consequence of Green Revolution is that although wages and employment for agricultural workers did increase in many areas as the demand for labour increased, but rising prices and a shift in the mode of payment of agricultural workers that is from payment in kind to cash actually worsened the economic conditions of most of the workers in rural areas, especially from the lower caste categories and the Dalits. The introduction of machinery such as tillers, tractors, threshers and harvesters in many areas led to displacement of the service caste groups who used to carry out these agricultural related activities earlier. We have discussed this as Jajmani system in agrarian social structure. This process of displacements also increased the pace of rural urban migration. Another negative impact of Green Revolution was the worsening of regional inequalities. The areas where technological transformation was done, they became developed and rest of the areas stagnated. For example, the Green Revolution was promoted more in Punjab, Haryana, Western UP and southern parts of the country than in the eastern parts. Agriculture in relatively less developed in states like Bihar, Eastern UP, dry regions of Telangana. These regions continued to have an entrenched feudal agrarian structure in which the dominant caste and landlords maintain power over the small cultivators and landless workers. The sharp caste and class inequalities together with exploitative labour relations are leading to discontent and violence among these people in these regions. After independence, the Dalits have been moving out of the exploitative structure of rural economy. The availability of petty jobs in the informal sector in urban areas is aiding this process of migration. The rural urban seasonal migration is also a proof of the fact that rural structure is gradually changing. You might have seen there are second and third generation of migrants from rural areas living in the cities. They feel more secure in cities because of relatively less discrimination and more opportunities of livelihood. They prefer to live on minimum or even slightly less than minimum wages in cities than to go back to their own villages. This is leading to rise in population densities in cities and development of slums. The second phase of Green Revolution was introduced in the dry and semi-arid regions of India. In these areas, there has been a significant shift from dry to wet cultivation, change in cropping patterns and types of crops grown. But dependence on market and commercialization in these areas has increased livelihood insecurity as farmers who once grew food for self-consumption now depend upon the market for income. Subsistence has been replaced by a market-oriented economy. In a market-oriented cultivation, especially when a single crop is grown, a fall in prices or a bad crop can mean financial crisis for farmers. In most of the Green Revolution areas, farmers have switched from a multi-crop system which actually allowed them to spread risk to a monocrop regime or a single crop system, which means that if crop fails, there is nothing to fall back upon. Another important social consequence of Green Revolution was impact on the knowledge, traditional knowledge. 
As you know, India has always been an agricultural society. Much before Green Revolution, farmers had deep and extensive knowledge about the various aspects of farming, like soil types, crop patterns, weather conditions. In the wake of scientific techniques and methods of Green Revolution that are thought to be more productive and yielding, much of this knowledge that had evolved over centuries has been lost. In fact, one can notice some reverse trends now. Seeing the negative impact of modern methods of cultivation on environment and human health, people are returning back to the traditional methods of cultivation. Organic farming or organic products are now being preferred more by people. Farmers themselves believe that hybrid varieties are less healthy than traditional and go for organic farming techniques and methods. Apart from per hectare productivity or output increasing, Green Revolution also led to change or transformation in the agrarian social structure. Some of the important changes are like a loosening of traditional bonds or heredity relationships between landowners and agricultural workers, known as bonded labor or what we have studied under the Jajmani system. The second is the rise of the class of free wage laborers, those who migrate from one area to another area at the time of agricultural harvesting. There is an increase in the use of agricultural labourer as cultivation became more intense. And finally, there is a shift from payment in kind, that is in the form of grain, to cash. The Jajmani system is now replaced by wage relations between landlords and agricultural workers. Sociologists usually describe this change as a shift from patronage to exploitation. Although transformation of rural economy or agrarian structure had begun under the colonial rule itself when the British forced farmers to grow commercial crops, yet the pace of change gained momentum only after independence. Another important change one can notice in the last couple of decades especially is that people from rural areas have started to appreciate importance of education, especially the higher education. The spread of higher education, especially private professional colleges in rural and semi-urban areas gave rural elites a chance to educate their children, many of whom became white-collar professionals in cities or have started their own businesses. They are now part of the growing urban middle class. Along with the project of modernization of agriculture, the government has also invested in the development of rural infrastructure, such as irrigation facilities, roads, electricity, agricultural inputs, credit through banks and cooperatives. The overall outcome of these efforts of rural development did not only transform the rural economy and agriculture, but it also transformed the agrarian society and the agrarian social structure. On a closer look, we will find that the story of rural transformation in India is quite uneven. On one end of the spectrum, you have areas witnessing rapid agricultural development. There has been a consolidation of old landed caste and cultivating groups in these areas who have transformed themselves through education into a dynamic entrepreneurial rural urban dominant class. On the other hand, there are regions such as Eastern UP Bihar where due to lack of effective land reforms and political mobilization, the agrarian structure has almost remained static and the life conditions of most of the people have not changed much. There are other interesting cases such as the state of Kerala. In Kerala, as such process of development, political mobilization, redistributive measures and linkages with the urban economy brought significant changes. Along with this, Kerala also benefited from the income it received from large number of immigrants in the form of remittance. As per a study, there are approximately 1.4 million Keralaites working in Gulf countries. They regularly send money back home to their families which has resulted in growth of rural economy in Kerala. Another significant change that has happened in the recent years is the rural areas close to big cities have become major source of investment due to boom in the real estate. The erstwhile landed class has become ultra rich because of the sale of their land holdings to real estate developers. For example, cities like Gurgaon and Noida have developed on the agricultural land bought from farmers. In other far-flung areas or villages, the condition remains the same. To conclude, let us summarize what we discussed in this chapter. We started our discussion with Green Revolution, discussed its features and positive and negative consequences. We also discussed about the nature of transformation in rural economy, agrarian structure, 
rural development and integration of rural economy with market economy. In the next part of this chapter, we will discuss about circulation of labor and rural transformation in contemporary India. Till then, you can enjoy reading the chapter. Thank you. Thank you.